but then you also founded Invisibility, Invisibility, Invisible, Invisible Disability, Disability Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> um, that was part of your gold <coughs> gosh, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, do you maybe just want to walk me through a bit of where that idea came about and why you wanted to start up Invisible Disability? Um, yeah. So, I suppose I have an invisible disability. I know what it's like for people to maybe not understand what it means to have an invisible disability because it's internal. People can't see it. Um, And so I was getting quite frustrated about things, particularly as I was kind of starting up college. I noticed kind of a lot of the inequalities that I faced um, in secondary school, then college, and then just in general. Um, And I remember looking up, you know, invisible disability charities in Ireland, and there wasn't any. And I couldn't believe it that there was no charity dedicated to invisible disabilities in Ireland because there's one in the UK and the US and I said well if if there's not one there then maybe this is something I should take on um, and so I did um, and then I said I would commit to my gold goshka and do 52 weeks of a community involvement and then it just really tied in nicely with my gold goshka and then setting up something that I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. Because the page at the moment is very much an awareness page isn't it around visible disabilities? Yeah so it's about all types of disabilities Um, it's about raising awareness campaigns just anything about about invisible disabilities Mm -hmm. so you you were diagnosed with rheumatoid i I, the words always escape me when it comes to this stuff because i'm just so not in depth Mm. with that i was terrible at science and i was terrible at everything to do with anything (laughs) with health so you had rheumatoid arthritis at the age of 13 was it yes so my type is juvenile idiopathic polyarticular rheumatoid positive arthritis so it's a very long name (laughs) But um, yeah, I was diagnosed, I reacted abnormally to a virus and then it triggered an abnormal response to my immune system. And then I relapsed permanently when I was 14. And then I was put on a low dosage of chemotherapy and then I was moved on to immunotherapy and a low dosage of chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so I've been on that now for five or six years now. So I'm immunocompromised during COVID, which has been tough, but you know, it's been okay. Yeah. But even at the age of 13, like that couldn't have been easy. Um, Like how, just from my own perspective and like, feel free to stop me at Mm -hmm. whatever point, but you know, most people at the age of 13 are just going into school. They're starting Mm -hmm. to, you know, make friends in secondary school. Like this is something that really puts a spanner in the works. Like, what was it like? How, how well did you react to it in that time? Because obviously most people wouldn't react well to it, but you're always, whenever I see you, you're always a very positive person. You're always outgoing. Um, Um, Yeah, it was a bit of a shock. Um, I woke up. It happened on a Friday and it, I just like deteriorated. I missed like almost a month of school. Mm. And then when I came back, I had lost half my hair. I had lost like a stone and weight. I was very, very sick. I couldn't walk for a, for a long time. So it was very challenging, but I hid it from my friends, obviously, because I didn't want people to judge me. Um, and maybe that's one of the beauties of an invisible disability is sometimes you can hide it. Mm. But Yeah, like it took a long time to come to terms with it, particularly arthritis as a stigma around it being an old person's disease. So I was worried people were going to see me differently and see kind of my illness rather than me. But I had fantastic friends who were like super supportive, always there for me. You know, if I wanted to talk, if I didn't, that was okay. And then, you know, my meds worked out really well. I kind of I went into partial remission at that stage and my hair had started to grow back and stuff. So I'd kind of, you know, gotten over the worst of it at that stage and, you know, having the friends and the family and I had the fantastic medical team in Crumlin Hospital just kind of helped the entire thing. So it was very tough, but I think when you live with it for so long, it just becomes part of the normal. I always say, like when I go to hospital, it's just like going to the bank. It's just something Mm. you have to do. It's just embedded in my life. And I, I, I honestly forget when I say I have to go to the hospital, people are like, and I'm like, no, 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 like it's just a regular checkup because people don't experience that. But I always say that's that's my normal. So I think I've adapted quite well to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, one thing I always always find um, fascinating with people who uh, especially are diagnosed with uh, such difficult conditions at young ages, because one of my best friends had a, um, it's not similar to yours in any case, Mm. but it was very bad. He, He couldn't actually eat it. I think it was something to do with his bladder or his bowel or something in which it meant that he wasn't able to eat physical food. He had to be fed through mm. a peg tube. Um, but one of the things I always notice is that like, when you run into these sort of people, they almost have a more upbeat attitude about life because they have that perspective. And I, I definitely noticed that with you as well, because I always find that, you know, as bad as things can be, there's always maybe a yeah. smile or a joke at the end of whatever, thing, whatever happens. Uh, has that 
has that always been the case or obviously i'd say there's times where you're very affected by it and it wouldn't be like some days you might want to get out of bed or you wouldn't want to do this that and the other is that, like how do you at least if you were trying to talk to someone in a similar position about mm-hmm. how you get out of that lump at the time yeah i think perspective is everything when you can't walk and there's days when you're ill and you're in hospital and you really appreciate the positive things in life and you appreciate the small things like just getting here on the bus today and being able just to come here is, is just like such a blessing in itself because I know what it's like to not be able to do that so and then I suppose like my time in Barrettstown really put a lot of things into perspective as well being with children and doing the therapeutic recreation program really helped but yeah I think when you have a different experience in life that always kind of influences how you go about your life and I feel yeah like I am a positive person majority of the time (laughs) but like I do have my moans my complaints there are days when I do get upset about it but like life is so short you can't you can't narrow and focus in on that you have to just go with it and I think you just make the best out of a bad situation 